When you create a scan plot summary, you're historically testing your scan conditions on the fly. This allows you to see how your scan is performing now versus how it normally performs. Let's use an example looking for stocks in the S&P 500 with a higher price now than they were at 26 weeks ago. I've chosen that scan condition for my watch list and both the scan and the chart are set on a weekly time frame. To create the graph, I click the Scan Plus button in my watch list and choose Scan Plot Summary. Now on this plot, the horizontal lines summarize how many stocks were typically returned for this scan. The graph gets widest, as you can see here, between, say, 60 and 80. That means that historically, 60 to 80% of the stocks in the watch list usually pass the scan. It's uncommon for over 90% to pass the scan, but it's even more rare for only 20% of the stocks to pass the scan. Those extremes are represented by the narrower parts of the graph. Where we are right now, and this is early May 2020, is represented by the red line. So we're in that rarefied space of 20% of the stocks in the watch list being higher in price than they were 26 weeks ago. At the bottom of the summary is the pass rate for the entire test for this watch list. In this case, it's 64% have passed. That look back period for the test is 1,500 bars, and that applies to whatever time frame you're testing. And all the time frames are supported, including intraday. Here's an example. I have my chart, watch list, and plot summary linked by time frame. So if I change time frame and say I go to a daily time frame, notice they recalculate. Now my graph is based on stocks that are higher in price than they were 26 days ago. Leave the scan plot open in your layout and it dynamically calculates and updates in real time. You can be running up to 15 of these scan plots at a time. So a scan plot summary simply allows you to test your conditions over time and see how their current performance compares to performance history.